So we're going to talk about what's so bad about e-cigarettes and vape pens. We're going to start first about what the effects of nicotine are. Nicotine is a drug that is a stimulant, meaning it raises levels of physical or physiological activity in the body, and it is toxic at high doses. It is highly addictive since it causes changes in brain chemistry quickly and leaves the brain craving more. Nicotine is found in tobacco products and nicotine exposure during fetal development has lasting adverse consequences for brain development. Data from studies of mice suggest that nicotine exposure during adolescence may have lasting adverse effects on brain development. If nicotine is unsafe, why do you think people still choose to use products that have nicotine? So let's see where we can find this highly addictive drug. Nicotine can be found in tobacco and comes from tobacco leaves. Nicotine is found in cigarettes and tobacco companies made cigarettes more addictive by controlling and increasing nicotine levels and enhancing the impact of nicotine by adding chemicals. Most hookah contains nicotine and overall can have a lot of the same negative health effects of cigarettes. An e-juice, which is used in e-cigs or vapes, can contain varying levels of nicotine. The reaction that nicotine has in the brain results in the stimulation of pleasure centers in the brain. When inhaled, nicotine enters into the brain after passing through the lungs. Then, it binds to pleasure receptors in the brain. This causes a release of pleasure chemicals, such as dopamine, providing the user with a temporary feeling of pleasure. This might not sound dangerous, but in reality, the nicotine interferes with the body's natural ability to experience or communicate pleasure. Nicotine use creates floods of dopamine and intense feelings. The pleasure centers in the brain adapts to drug use by sensing the extra dopamine and then begins to produce less of it. This means that the user has a hard time creating natural feelings of pleasure without nicotine. The user needs the nicotine just to feel normal and additionally, the pleasure centers in the brain creates a memory of nicotine and an appetite for it. This appetite for nicotine, even despite its harmful consequences, is what we refer to as nicotine addiction. Nicotine is highly addictive. What that means is, the human brain can develop such a strong dependence on the drug that the nicotine user can no longer control their desire or smoking behaviors. The cycle of nicotine addiction starts with bringing nicotine into the body. In this case, it comes from inhalation of cigarettes, hookah, and e-cigs or vapes. Nicotine enters the brain and activates the pleasure centers of the brain. After the level of nicotine in the body drops quickly, this drop in nicotine levels causes the body to have a strong craving for nicotine that is satisfied by bringing more nicotine into the body. This cycle is powered by the body's biological reaction to nicotine and isn't controlled by the person vaping. Based on this information, what could you say to someone who says they won't let themselves get addicted to nicotine? Nicotine doesn't just have an effect on your brain, it can also have effects all over your body. For example, using nicotine can also make your heart beat faster because it can activate your fight or flight response. Nicotine can independently cause trouble breathing and damage to your lungs outside of all the chemicals and toxins in cigarettes. Nicotine can cause you to have increased acid reflux. Also, it can cause insulin resistance, making it potentially more dangerous for those with diabetes. Also, nicotine can negatively impact your reproductive organs. Now we're going to begin to talk a little bit about the effects of flavorings. One of the major appeals of e-cigs or vapes is the over 7,000 flavors of e-liquid available. The various trendy flavors have been a very successful marketing strategy that allows e-cig vape users to consume nicotine without the harsh taste of cigarettes. It may come as a surprise to many, but the flavors themselves pose a risk to the e-cig or vape user. 
Some flavors have been shown to be toxic due to the chemicals they contain. Various cinnamon flavors contain cytotoxic compounds. The cherry flavor, benzaldehyde, has some toxicity as well. A mixture of compounds containing diacetyl causes popcorn lung. This irreversible respiratory disease was named after factory workers who inhaled artificial butter flavor while working, causing the small airways in the lungs becoming irreversibly scarred and constricted, impairing their breathing. Diacetyl has been found in many e-liquids with sweet flavors. Now we're going to go into the effects on our health. Based on current information, we know that there are health risks when people use these products. The aerosol produced by the chemicals in e-juice enter into the user's lungs and leave chemical residue behind. Also, many e-cigs and vapes have nicotine, which is known to have effects on the cardiovascular system. Some recent studies show that the acute use of e-cigarette impaired flow-mediated dilation, and this suggests that e-cigs can lead to cardiovascular diseases. Ear, eye, and throat irritation is also common among e-cig and vape users. And perhaps most worrisome is the possibility of more young people developing an addiction to nicotine. Nicotine use in early adolescence causes changes in the brain that make lifelong addiction much more likely for young e-cig and vape users. Since e-cig and vape products are so new and health professionals can't fast forward into the future, all of the long-term consequences of these products are impossible to predict. Based on what we do know today from research on the chemicals found in e-cigs and vapes, we can say that these products are not harmless to the user or the people around them. But for close to 20 years, health professionals did not know the long-term effects of cigarette smoke either. Just imagine what else we will know in another 10 years when we have a fuller picture of all the health consequences. Another way that e-cigs pose a danger to people other than the smoker is through third-hand smoke. You may be familiar with the concept of secondhand smoke. How would you define secondhand smoke? So secondhand smoke is from burning tobacco products such as cigarettes, cigars, or pipes, and is toxic when inhaled. Although it is not yet known whether secondhand aerosol from e-cig devices is harmful, there is evidence to show that third-hand smoke is dangerous to others. Can you try and guess what third-hand smoke is? Third-hand smoke is chemicals in e-cig, vapor, or aerosol that remain on surfaces and in dust, even after the vapor and aerosol are gone. Third-hand smoke is chemicals in e-cig vapor or aerosol that remain on the surfaces and in dust, even after the vapor and aerosol are gone, and they react with other chemicals in the environment to form toxic chemicals that are re-released into the environment. People and pets can be exposed to these potentially harmful chemicals through the respiratory system, through ingestions, and through skin exposure. Small children are especially at risk for third-hand smoke exposure, and they tend to touch surfaces and put their hands into their mouths, and they have more vulnerable skin. And that concludes our discussion today about what's so bad about e-cigarettes and vape pens. Knowing what we do know about e-cigs and considering all the things we don't know about e-cigs, why do teens still choose to use e-cigs and vapes?